how do you balance those emotions of finding a place that you personally seem to love a lot while also needing to fight for your opportunities? Uh, yeah, there's it's a lot. I mean, it's, it's, it's stressful for sure, but I definitely love my time in Buffalo here, and it's been amazing. And um, I couldn't have asked for things to work out any better. And um, I'm really, really happy that I ended up here. I just had a great exit meeting with all the, the coaches and the general managers and stuff like that, and I just stressed that I really want to be back here and be a part of this team. And I see such a bright future. And just like the locker room and the camaraderie and, and how everybody clicks here is just, it's just amazing. So um, it's definitely something I want to be a part of, and that's something that I made pretty well known. How long did it take you to really see what this group had in this room? I'm sure you didn't have really any expectations when you got claimed you show up. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, in the first, like, week, I was like, holy smokes, there's something really special here. Um, I mean, I came in, and we were on the eight-game losing streak. So um, I think my first game back was when we snapped that losing streak. So I came in with not knowing what to expect or what direction the team was in. And Buffalo being out east, I was not very familiar with, with anything really going on with this organization. And after the first week, I remember giving a call back to my grandma and my mo or my grandpa and my mom, and I was like, holy smokes, this is a really, really special group. And um, yeah, it's, it's just cool. It's, it's, it's so much so much promising future here for, for the Sabres, and um, I want to be a part of that. When you made that call, how much of it was what you had seen on the ice and how much was what you had seen off the ice? I think, honestly, most of it started off with off ice. I was just, I mean, I'm sure everyone's mom wants to hear how their son's doing <laughs> and if they're fitting in and stuff like that, and I just told her it's... It's just so special. I feel like I'm part of the family already, and it's only been a week, and obviously that just grew as, as more time went along here. And I mean, I can call some of these guys my best friends now, and I've only been here for whatever, four or five months. So um, I've created some pretty cool relationships, and that's just what you see in this locker room. And that's what makes a good hockey team, too. Like, I look back in Colorado and um, just the relationships that I had with that team and kind of the dynamic of that team, and there's so many similar similarities here with – with Buffalo, so that's really cool, and um, it's special too. It makes it fun coming to the rink, and everybody wants to enjoy their job, and, and that's something that really makes it easy to do here. Early on, we talked about Donnie's system of playing free and how you were getting used to that and opening up. Over the past few months of being able to do that, what have you learned about yourself and your game and what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely another level I can get to. Um, I've never really experienced a coaching staff like this that's so dialed in and in tune with that side of the game and it's so so important I don't think many people realize how important that is I know for myself personally there was I mean not times throughout my career but my basically my whole career so far I was playing in fear and worried about making mistakes and worried about like the outside factors and it wasn't allowing me to get to my game and um, that's actually stuff that we just talked about with the coaches with myself is I want to take that next step and that whole psyche and, and whatnot and I believe there's a lot of potential I can still unlock and I need to try and dial that in and, and keep striving for that. Maybe you can learn about there. meditation from Devin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We were actually talking about that a couple of weeks ago. It's hilarious, but yeah. You look around the room, there's maybe six guys who had career years this year. Is, is that what you just talked about, the, the, that mindset from the coaching staff? Do you think that has a lot to do with those individual successes? 100%. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone in the NHL is obviously talented and, and whatnot and can play hockey at a high level, but I think it's unlocking that side of things and that mental side of things. and truly believing in yourself and um, that's where I want to get and I know I can do that and um, if I am back next year which I which I hope I am that's something that I want to unlock and um, and reach that how did you feel physically uh, throughout the year anything you were dealing with uh, there's a few nicks and, and whatever and um, I mean everyone goes through that it's just the longing of the 82 game season in the NHL so um, yeah there's just part of being a hockey player you touched on it a little about feedback. I know last time we talked about feedback, it was when you'd been bumped out of the lineup and you said you got all positive feedback. How did those exit interviews go, you feel? Oh, uh, yeah, it was good. Um, a lot different than my previous exit interviews with different coaches and whatnot in, in the past. And It was just a lot of the stuff talking about, like, the psyche and, and trying to unlock my potential and, and get getting to become a better player. So um, it was very insightful, and um, I just kind of left that meeting. I'm like, thank you so much. I've never heard feedback like this before. And... It's why I think this organization is in such a great place because you have people like that that care so much, and um, it's it's really refreshing. How yeah. else is it d different without throwing anyone under the bus or anything? But like, do you feel that these coaches are more accessible than you've had before? Or what's making it so impactful? Um, yeah, I'd say that. I mean, there's there's a lot of kind of things that go into it, and I mean, I'm not knocking any of the other organizations I've been in. They were both amazing. Mm -hmm. Both Minnesota and, and Colorado were, were outstanding. I think they're just. 
Donnie's very in tune with kind of what's going on and he knows his players and um, I think maybe part of that was he worked with like the US program so he knows a lot of the younger players and stuff and some of the challenges that everyone goes through so um, I think that definitely helps for sure. Why should people here be excited about having Matthias Samuelson under contract for the next seven years? I think he's one of the most underrated players in the NHL. Um, yeah, he's, he's so outstanding. I mean, maybe he doesn't go out and he's not like the flashiest guy or whatever, or doesn't put up like huge numbers, but he's out there against everyone, everyone's top line and everyone's top players. And there's just so much more his game has to offer too. I think he's only going to get better and better. As you can probably say that about 50, 50, 70% of our team right now. So that's what, that's what is exciting about this organization. Yeah, it's very similar. Um, I actually just talked about this with some of the guys and even some of the coaching staff and general management. Um, yeah, my first year in Colorado was very, very similar to kind of what we got going on right now. And um, I mean, I came out of college and we were the worst team in the NHL for, for Colorado. And then the next year we made playoffs. And um, I see a lot of that in this locker room, a lot of similarities. And um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's super exciting.